your Andy Goshen video. In this episode, we are going to spend some time talking about six blog posts that have been sent in to go collect. This first blogger does something that I think is really cool. This second blog post is actually near and dear to my so heart. So this next blog post is right up my alley. I want to play a game. The MCU has done some pretty interesting things, right? The folks over at Go Collect, it was all about more than meeting the eye. You could potentially get ahead of the curve, and we all know attention. that Marvel is going to do something with Daredevil. While we are on this topic of Spider-Man, we have to acknowledge the elephant that is in the room, and the elephant is Miles Morales, a 3.5 sold. So there you have it. We have reached the end of another Go Collect weekly recap. I hope that you guys enjoyed it and we'll tune in next week. Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Wizard World Virtual Experiences as the crowd emojis wildly. Let's see those emojis. You can clap too. We, we can't hear you, but uh, we, we know and we feel your love uh, from around the world. Uh, let's get those thumbs up and hearts on Facebook. Uh, you give exclamation points on YouTube and then Twitch. You guys got the full gamut of crazy emojis. You can design your own emojis. So show us the love. Uh, one of my favorite series of all time. It's like a, one of those cult classics. and I can't wait to talk to the cast members about it. Uh, some of the cast members of Freaks and Geeks are about to come out in just a few moments. Uh, some housekeeping things. We are streaming this to you completely free and live at Facebook. Twitch and YouTube, um, but just know there are some paid virtual <laughs> of as well. Um, if you like what you see here today, head to wizardworldvirtual.com uh, where you can purchase one-on-one -on -one video chats with each or every one of these cast members. Those will be taking place on Sunday, so they'll be on sale through Saturday night. Um, in addition to autographs and video recorded messages, uh, so you know, treat yourself. I know times are tough right now, uh, but if you have a loved one that you want to get something special for, or again, you just want to treat yourself, definitely take it of those it's a once in a lifetime experience especially those zoom calls it's you one-on-one -on -one with your favorite actors uh and a wizard world employee standing by um but you get uh two to three minutes uh with them so definitely take advantage of those uh those are the paid experiences these panels are free we have amazing panels coming up tonight at 7 p.m uh, night mage and baby lka cosplay are doing a co uh, makeup 101 demo so definitely come on back here and check that out at 7 p.m eastern Head to the Wizard World Vault. Uh, we can't do physical conventions right now. We can't wait to get back to them and see you in person. We're going to continue these because they've been going great. We've been connecting with folks and fans around the world. And so we're going to continue these. We'll get back to physical conventions soon. But in the meantime, we have to support our artists and vendors. And we've created an online convention floor at the wizardworldvault.com. You can find memorabilia from past conventions, past virtual experiences, signed autographs, Funko Pops, uh, posters, comic books, uh, works of art um, that is signed, uh, all kinds of amazing stuff. So check that out at the wizardworldvault.com. And last but not least, shout out to our amazing sponsor this July, Go Collect. Go to gocollect.com. They are keeping the comic book collection and comic book grading scene alive digitally. Head to gocollect.com to get your comics and posters graded. Uh, they also have a fun video blog where they just talk all things nerd. Speaking of nerds, let's bring out some nerds right now or some geeks. Sorry, I know there's like some contention over which definition is which, but uh, we've got some freaks and geeks uh, about to come out. Let's welcome them to the virtual stage. Um, you know her from The Parent Trap. Orange County, go. She is the voice of Ruth in Family Guy. Um, she plays cheerleader and longtime crush of Sam. Uh, uh, Cindy Sanders, let's hear it for Natasha Mecklin. <laughs> Melnick, oh my gosh, what's her name? <laughs> it doesn't Natasha matter. Natasha Melnick, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm it's actually okay. Natasha Tucker, so it really doesn't matter. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> well, Natasha, thank you so much for being here. Uh, tell everybody uh, what's been so cool about these conventions is uh, we're finding folks watching from around the world. Even folks in Australia are like staying up till 3 a.m. to watch uh, these panels. Uh, it's amazing. We have someone watching from Guatemala uh, right now um, in, yeah, in, the, in the thread, in addition to around uh, the country, obviously around the U.S. Uh, where, are you, where are you zooming in from right now? Hawaii. <laughs> oh, so what time is it what time is it there for you 10 05 a.m all right not too bad not too bad, not bad. yeah no. yeah we've we've had we've forced actors to wake up at like 3 a.m in australia to do these so not too bad 10 a.m it's a nice cool uh, morning <laughs> <laughs> uh well thank you for being here let's get uh all the rest of your cast members out uh you know this next gentleman from from countless films 
television shows, voiceover, the stage, uh, most notably from Raising Arizona, Drop Dead Gorgeous, LA Story, The Tracy Ullman Show, The King of Queens, and my favorite, the voice of Roy in Dinosaurs, everybody. Let's bring out dentist and father of one of our other characters, Vic Schweiber. Let's hear it for Sam McMurray. Woo! I made it. You did it, Sam. You did it. Yeah, did it. <laughs> we worked with Sam uh, beforehand on the whole stop video, start video. It's not, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter whether you're computer proficient or not. It's not the easiest thing to do, but you did it uh, effortlessly right there. It was seamless. I've training. actually been doing a number of Zoom things, including a playwrights conference, which was truly bizarre, but I think it was helpful, at least for the playwrights. That is uh, amazing. I usually go to in, um, in, in June and July up in Idaho, of all things. And I, I, you know, full marks for, for attempting to do it, even though nobody was there, in fact. So. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is the best way to connect these days. And so it's just anybody who's trying to do anything, I feel like, especially in the in the like theater world, um, you know, kudos and, and shout out to them for just getting together. Have you been doing readings and such on? I know that's been a thing. A yeah. Lot of comes in 10, yeah. Yeah, I have. And, and I have to confess that the Zoom experience, for the most part, because I've been on both sides of it, it is sure. more enjoyable for the watcher rather than the participant. At least that's been my experience so far. But I'm going to do probably a reading of uh, a Robbie Bates play called Other Desert Cities. And, you know, just for shit and giggles, I think. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I've done a number of these things. And some of them are, you know, more or less successful than others. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah. you know, keeps me off the streets and well, like well, <laughs> <keeps> <laughs> off the streets. uh, well, yeah. I know I speak on behalf of the fans exactly what you said, Sam. It uh, it, it can often feel awkward as a performer, right, on our end, but from the fans' perspective, right. it's like they're watching us live, and so we appreciate you doing this, uh, for sure. Um, let's bring out uh, his son, the other Schweiber, um, that's waiting in the back room. Uh, you know him from uh, over 60 films and television shows. Uh, not another teen movie, Wet Hot American Summer, 10 years later, Inglorious Bastards. Uh, most recently, he has turned and become a host himself, not only with the Wizard World Circuit, uh, but on Kevin Pollock's chat show and the movie trivia Schmodown. Let's give it up for comic genius and self-proclaimed <laughs> ladies' man, Neil Schweiber, Sam Levine. Yeah! <laughs> huh? Come on, Sam. Oh, that was great. Did I That's not an old bio, though. No, that was trippy. That's an old bio. I've been in over sixty-one movies so and TV sorry. shows now. I'm so sorry. Let me uh, let please, me fix that for please, our next. Please look into that. Yeah, yeah. Well, technically, I said over sixty, so sixty-one. So it could be any number. I guess you're right. That's still it, technically accurate. Once you get to a hundred, I'll switch it for you. I'll say hundreds of. Uh, okay, thank shows. you. Yeah, I appreciate. It. <laughs> Sam, that is a lovely uh, backdrop. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Oh, I broke into uh, Grant High School here in Los Angeles where we used to shoot the show uh, because I figured, you know, if we're going to do it, I want to do it right for the fans. So this is where we took the iconic picture of all of us, the, you know, the freaks oh, and the yeah. geeks on the cover of the DVD. With the logo, with the, yeah, that. with the, uh, with the, uh, with the, the logo there, the Freaks right? and Geeks logo. It's actually just out of frame. I wish I could pan up. But I know I can maybe. Is no, just not just not working. So um, so it's just like there's something wrong with the tripod. Sam, I forgot. Do, I forgot to ask. Let's check. Me, so. Let's check in with both Sams. Um, so we've got Hawaii. Sam uh, McMurray, where are you uh, currently located in the? I'm in LA. LA. Uh, yeah, I was actually on my way to New York on March wow. 9th, and I thought maybe not. So yeah. I've been here ever. Since. Yeah. Smart. Moves. Where I live. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you, Sam? Do you live in New York? Me? Normal? No, I have an. I'm from New York, uh, um, and I have an apartment there, which has sort of been, well, the bane of my existence to some degree. It's a big place I share with a couple of degenerate musicians who are all, you know, even older than I am. But when I get a job offer in New York, it becomes handy because they say, "Will you work as a New York hire, a local hire?" That is, ah. which means they won't fly me and they won't put me up or per diem. They will right. take me to the set because they want me there on time. But at least I have the place in New York, which, as I said, it's my hometown after all, so that's handy. But yeah. I mean, it's been it's been empty now. This apartment <laughs> it's like seven rooms for wow. Oh god, since February, I think. Sam, so. Sam, I would love to get out of my two bedroom, uh, two room apartment in New York. If you want me to house it, we can talk afterwards. But yeah, well, I have to talk <laughs> to my friend, the uh, the composer, and you know, the drummer, <laughs> Murata, But it's his uh, apartment. No, yeah, I'm kidding. I, I'm kidding. But thank, I, yeah, that's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, Sam Levine, how about you? 
Where are you calling uh, I am also here in, in Los Angeles, uh, not terribly far from my fictional father, Mr. McMurray. Oh. Uh, and uh, yeah. And hey, to keep things super easy, uh, you guys can either call me uh, Levine or Hey You. Uh, <laughs> so I'll assume, I'll assume anything directed at Sam is for uh, Sam McMurray. I and should... then uh, Hey You or Levine is it's for me. It's crazy because I thought it was David Krumholtz for a minute, but I guess he could. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh wait a minute. Oh, we got to wow. get him in here. Wow, the burn. We, we should, actually. We should. He would hear it. Uh, he would be awesome. He would be awesome. Let's not leave. We have, we do have, speaking of people waiting in the background, though, we do, have a, a, we do have a very patient person that is still just hanging behind their stop video. Let's get her out here. We just spoke to her a couple of days ago, Wizard World fans. Um, I mean, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She was Amanda in uh, Buffy. She's been uh, a, ca- a guest star on countless television shows. Um, she's from the film Spring Breakdown. She is Lindsay's geeky and highly religious former best friend. Ugh, Lindsay. Um, uh, Millie. Kentner, please give it up for Sarah Hagen. Woo! <laughs> wow, that was a <laughs> took me a long time to get out here, guys. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry. laughs> it's been a while. We really should have left. We should have left. Should have left you, uh, refer- Sam Levine, just out, and then got you all out here, and then really kick things off. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry, Sarah. <laughs> like, it's all good. It's all good. Like, I enjoy listening to you guys. Thank you for your patience. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you're um, a mom now, so any alone time you have, I'm oh, sure I know. Is yeah. precious to you. <laughs> Can we sure. uh, zoom? Let's get some emoji love out there. Congratulations, Sarah. How oh, old? thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thank how you. old? How old is your uh, child now? Uh, she'll be two September eighth. So. Oh. Holy yeah. crap! Time goes by. It goes by really mm-hmm. fast. It's crazy, and she's crazy. She's <laughs> a lot. She has no fear. <laughs> it just gets better and better. Yeah, <laughs> and she hasn't even hit two yet, so you know it's gonna yeah. it's gonna be. Uh... You sound like an advertisement for birth control. <laughs> <laughs> well, good. Hopefully, um, yeah, I'm a good role model. <laughs> babies, uh, sorry, I will say that babies and pets do steal the show. So if she does wake up and you need to go, what's her? What is her first name? Francis. Francis. Oh, lovely name. Lovely name. Yeah. If, if Francis needs to make an appearance, it's totally fine. Uh, Sam, okay. Sam Levine will be a little jealous, you know what I mean? But uh, if it steals some focus, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's get, uh, let's get to the, the questions. Uh, we have fans again, this is so cool. Uh, you know, normally when we're at physical conventions, it's, you know, pretty limited to the city that we're in and the amount of people that are willing to travel there. Um, we have folks uh, watching from around the world right now, again, not only across the U S shout out to California, New York, Dallas, uh, India, Indiana, Colorado, um, someone from Hawaii actually too. Uh, but we have folks watching Woo! in yeah, Guatemala and Belgium right now, um, Denmark, my gosh, um, fans tuning in uh, from Europe and South America. Um, so thanks again, uh, Del- Delaware. <laughs> uh, thanks so much <laughs> for uh, doing this. Uh, the, the one fan question that always comes through and it's already coming through right now is just uh, if you picked up any, what, what have you been doing? What have you been doing to pass the time? I know we've all been stuck in this sort of shared experience together. Um, so if, have there been any unusual hobbies or just maybe not unusual hobbies, but um, things that you've started or, or unique things that you've done that really have like stood out to you as like, man, I would have never done this or thought about this um, before, but because I've just been you know in this situation for the last four or five months, uh, I've, I've picked up this new thing. Natasha, why don't you uh, kick us off since you were the first one out here? So uh, I hate social media for me. Oh, oh. For me, like I don't do, I post on like my personal Instagram, like once every seven or eight months, maybe. Um, I don't do Twitter. I don't do Facebook. I don't do anything like that. But I was incredibly bored and uh, I have not worked since March 14th. So I've started an Instagram. I post like six times a day (laughs) and it's all, it's called Lucky Live Hawaii. And it's all about how lucky we are live in Hawaii and it's really fun I mean it gets me like out and like taking pictures in the world I have to admit I'm going to go like, follow you right now yeah do it it's lucky dot yeah it's lucky dot live dot Hawaii um dot live I, dot Hawaii. for the first like two months I think I drank enough for the rest of my life and <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. <laughs> Wait, just the first two months, so you haven't just continued first... on? No, 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 because I found my, my hobby. I found my calling. We weren't allowed to go outside. Hawaii took this like way serious. We were not allowed great. to go anywhere. And good we job, really good job, Hawaii. Yeah, good job, Hawaii. Really, really yeah. fast. Um, and so, I mean, we couldn't go to the beach. We couldn't uh, go anywhere except the grocery store or the hospital. Um, so it was a lot of food, a lot of eating. Sure. Um, so it was really nice as soon as like we were able to get out. I was like, well, fuck yeah, I'm gonna start taking pictures and post them on Instagram. <laughs> and it's cute because there's like a community. Yeah. There's no pictures of me, which is great. <laughs> so it's really fun. Well, it's yeah, it's been fun to talk. You know, like where is? I'll be right back. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh oh, are we getting Francis? <laughs> We might get Francis might be coming back. <laughs> um, Natasha, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, because like you say, it, uh, before all this, you know, social media was, you know, a thing, a place of whatever people wanted to make it be. But it could be very evil, very sad. But now it's like such a pe people are using it to connect um, yeah. even more so. And so you found that that connection of like, you know, people checking in and sharing experiences and seeing where you are, you know, what you're and doing. I love looking at other people's pictures and it's just super fun. It's awesome. something I literally never did before, and I'm super stoked on doing it now. Cool. Well, congratulations. I'm glad, I'm glad you're happy doing that. Well, thank you. Yeah. And Sarah... now I get to go to the beach, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is nice that you have the beach. <laughs> yeah. I guess when we'll you have see like... how long that lasts, though. <laughs> yeah. When you have really nice things to take pictures of, it makes it a whole lot easier. <laughs> it's so easy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh... Um, Sarah, how about you? I know you mentioned you've got this two-year-old. How has life been? Uh, is it all just about the two-year-old or have you been able to take up any other hobbies or interests uh, during this time? It's mostly the two-year-old, so you're absolutely <laughs> right. I yeah. get about two hours a day sometimes when she's napping. Um, sometimes she decides that, oh, I just don't want to nap today. And that's <laughs> a very unfortunate and long and horrible day. Um, but you know, during the two hours of nap, I will sometimes sleep. I will sometimes <laughs> just watch TV. Um, I have collected a ton of like wine corks. So I decided to make a cork board and I used, yeah. it took me three days. So three of her naps to do it. <laughs> and this is it. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh. This is a, re a live reveal, everybody. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, get... oh, man, I didn't know we were doing show and tell. So, I thought you, you know, that's what money. I am doing <laughs> during my lockdown. Also, I cut my fiance's hair yesterday, and oh. it looks horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yay, congratulations. Yeah. That's Not nice. on the congratulations the to him for a <laughs> terrible haircut. <laughs> Well, and, that, and that's very nice. It, it means he didn't have to go out and, you know, go into a situation that maybe was unsafe. And so you did that for him. I think that's super sweet. And you can yeah. count the amount of bottles of wine you've had uh, throughout quarantine. So I think that's awesome. There you go. Well, yeah. this was before quarantine. So I did. Oh, I actually nice. have a few more cork boards to make <laughs> <laughs> since then. Awesome. Uh, Sam McMurray, we talked a little bit briefly when you came on about uh, your continued work, you know, in stage and theater over this, you know, strange new Zoom format. But, you know, besides that or, you know, in addition to that, uh, anything else to add that you've sort of picked up or discovered that's been a new thing um, during this whole time? A year ago, I went to Montgomery, Alabama, the Alabama Shakespeare Festival to do oh, a play yeah. by a friend of mine, which I think is quite brilliant, called Buzz, directed by Carrie Preston and um, I remember the cast of nine. And it was terrifying because I grew up in the theater. My parents were both actors and sure. my elder daughter is an actress as well. I don't think she'd like me calling her elder, but you get it. Um, <laughs> but it, it was terrifying. I mean, I'd been 25 years since I'd been on stage without book in hand, you know, doing yeah. stage. Reading. But um, this woman who's a dear friend who lives in New York and keeps banging away at it, we did actually another play of hers that uh, Carrie Preston was in and this was right towards the beginning of March uh, and directed by my friend Julianne Emery, who is a tremendous hyphen. Um, we did it twice, in fact, with Amy Aquino one oh, time. Very nice. um, so sorry to miss her. Yeah. But it's sort of and then, you know, when the guano hit the fan here, my <laughs> elder daughter, who was down in Carlsbad at the what they called North Coast Rep there outside of San Diego, she stayed there for a while. But she she was doing a pinter play, got canceled. And then she came up and stayed with me which was great for two months. And yeah. now my younger daughter, who's not in the business, she's the one who escaped the family, you know, <laughs> illness. 
she drove down with her dog and her boyfriend from San Francisco and she's staying with me now. So that's great. But to answer your question in a roundabout way, I thought, got, I thought, I thought this was leading. Uh, yeah. Oh, awesome, so, awesome. And I've been doing that. And that was something I used to do 35 years ago. In fact, I did it for a living back in the, uh, the dog and pony show days, writing industrials. But this has been a very interesting journey. And, um, it puts me through a lot of hoops that I'm not particularly fond of. But oh. if it leads me to something that's self-generating as opposed to being an actor, then it's a good thing, you know, so. That, that's so awesome, yeah. I mean, the chat, yeah, I think and that's like the positive thing that, again, a lot of people have said is they've, you know, been challenging themselves to do things, like you said, even Natasha, I mean, even something as simple as like an Instagram, you hated social media, you, you pivoted to Instagram, you know what I mean? And you're finding a lot of happiness in it. Same thing with you, Sam, um, you know what I mean? Like you to challenge yourself and try new things and kind of, are you writing like plays Wait, or books or novels? Are you novels? writing off my cork board? Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> that was like, my, not me, not that was my, that was I, my... I, I was such a rambunctious child that when I got a, my bedroom and I was like, I don't know, eight in New York, my parents actually had the floor made out of cork because oh. I was just bouncing off of everything, which was fairly clever. <laughs> but no, is. no, not at all. In fact, what I did think of though was, you're probably going to run out of material because if you notice, wine is now coming all screw top, even the better, you know, vintage. Yeah. Because yeah, it lasts I... longer that way, actually. So, oh, well. Yeah, is... Smaller percentage. Actually, I think it's like a near zero percentage of spoilage for, 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 for screw top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, well. <laughs> I've been doing some of that, though. I've been enjoying that, the drinking part. That's always fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think, I think nice we've all, yeah. when we get older though, guys, like, does it hurt so much more in the morning or is it just me? <laughs> no, you're okay. I don't think I've been drinking to access that. If that's the <laughs> oh, it is just me then. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I... No, after like two glasses of wine the next day, I'm like, Did oh, I? I hate my life so much. Uh -huh. No, is it just me? I, I, well, I think mine, great, mine's waking up no. at 5 a.m. every morning with the child. So now, yeah, you just like, got to stay drunk for that. <laughs> that's right. The, there it is. Oh, there the dog. I'm doing it wrong. Okay. Sam, you were, shaking, yeah, you were shaking your head. No, Sam Levine. Yeah, I mean, that you're clearly a pro, right? And you've just mastered the art of drinking. Oh, I've been drunk since March 15th. <laughs> 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 I have not missed a day. It strikes 11 a.m. I start with the white wine. I move to rosé in the afternoon. <laughs> and that's and then I start mixing it up at night. They say you're not supposed to, but I just pour it all into one bowl. <laughs> Guys, Paul, I don't know if anyone watched Paul Feig's like quarantine oh. cocktails. Yeah. No. Like did you guys watch those? I watched almost, I watched almost all of them. He would do them at like 5 p.m. Pacific time. Um did you on follow Instagram. Did what? you make a drink according oh, to his no. I mean, sometimes oh. I would. I would do it after he would. But, like, he has, like, an insane supply of, like, mixers in. Oh, really? I don't even know. Like, yeah. like um, He stocked up on all the important items. Bar. Yeah. And, and I'm just like, I can't good? even. And were the drinks good? I would. Oh, like, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah? Okay. And yeah. Were, like, classic cocktails. To yeah. Create Lots of different things. Mm -hmm. The crazy things. Yeah. But he's got to like a hundred episodes or something, like a hundred days, and then he's like, "Okay, got to get back to work." Guys. Yeah. Does he do it like in full Paul Feig? Like yes, like oh, right. yes. Oh, yes. Right. it's amazing. That's so and awesome. He does it with his wife. Lori comes wife. in later yep. with the squeaky door, and they oh, dance, and they, you know, they give good right. advice, like advice or no lame advice. Sorry, lame advice, not good right. advice. Um, I know it's a, it's a fun watch. I was, that was what Paul Feig was doing during his quarantine. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Sam Levine, let's, let's turn to you. There's actually a very specific question from Brian Nussbaum, who's watching. Oh. Um, he said is the, he is the former movie Schmodown singles and team champ. Oh no, sorry. This is for the former Schmodown singles and team champ. You, that makes sense. Uh, are you po are you just polishing your belt during quarantine? Is what Brian? Is ah, like. that's a wonderfully <laughs> funny inside joke that literally two or three people will be able to enjoy. So thank you. So shout um, out to Brian. Thanks for watching. Yeah, no, Brian. yeah, yeah. Uh, but tell, yes, tell us, tell us, tell us, tell us what you've been up to. Oh, uh, so belt. I 
<laughs> took the opportunity uh, during this downtime to learn about uh, technology and computer stuff that I didn't know about. And I learned about this thing called catfishing. Uh, so yeah. I have been mounting an aggressive campaign <laughs> to really mess with everyone I went to uh, grade school with. Um, I'm posing as a Nigerian prince. <laughs> and so far, I have collected... Uh, over thirty thousand dollars from these people, and I mean, I'm going to give it all back. But it's just, I got gotcha. you. You called me names when we were kids, but now who's got who? Sam, I this gotcha. is this is this is live streaming on three platforms uh, around the world to uh, thousands of people. Just just so you know, um, so you might have just outed yourself there. But uh, FBI, this is it's a joke. I'm joking. Uh, uh, don't don't come after me. I'm I, I kid. I kid. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a second to retract there. <laughs> All right. You're you so in much. trouble in Nigeria, too. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Not let's, again. Let's talk about the show. Uh, uh, obviously, we already shouted out to Paul Feig. Uh, what a genius. What a, what a brilliant uh, creator and writer and, and everything. Obviously, this was his, his baby uh, from the mm -hmm. start. It, it ran for it. I like to compare. I, I like to say this is the um, Firefly of comedies, you know what I mean? Firefly, the, it's Firefly sure. is, yeah, Sam McMurray, it's, it's Firefly was a, a it's a popular sci-fi series that went one season. Oh yes. But, jo yeah, Joss but, Whedon, right? But Joss, yeah. Joss Whedon, and yeah. still people are like getting together as casts and like, and going to conventions and it has a giant following and they had probably even less than you all. I think you had uh, 18 episodes. They, they probably had like 12 or some of that, but it's, this isn't about them, this is about you. It's the same thing, you had 12 episodes aired you know what i mean that then due to fans got the we got the additional six and i think like the additional three aired and then we got like the final ones uh like when they it sort of re-aired but fans pushed and pushed and pushed and it's still being rewatched today for one season of a show that is just such a brilliant show about adolescence and and real life uh in high school uh this a specific question comes from amber jeanette andrus I love this show. It deserves so much time, more time on the air. Um, and so I, the question is, is not, you know, what do you regret or like what do you think? But just like, what do you think is that what has last, created to that lasting power that people are still rediscovering it and enjoying it and just just savoring that eight, those 18 episodes? Uh, whoever wants to kick off. Uh, I'll start. I, I think the, the thing, and I've, and I've uh, you know, talked about this before. I think one of the sure. things that keeps people coming back to the show is even though it is a period piece, even though it's set in 1980 in Michigan, sure. the, the themes, the relationships, the wants, the desires of the characters in the show, those are truly universal. It does not matter what era you are from. Every kid who goes to school worries about fitting in, being popular, uh, c coming across the, the, the way they see themselves in their head. And this show really took that, those themes very seriously they didn't it wasn't about beautiful attractive people who are great athletes and prom queens fitting in it was about everyone else and i think that that's why so many people across so many different generations are able to relate to it so well mm -hmm. yeah that's awesome true I, oh, oh you go i just said true oh <laughs> Well, I'm gonna say going. universal themes, you know, but you know, yeah. Sam already got that. So, but yeah, no, you got the family life, you got the school life, you got every single sort of character you could kind of think of, you know, like it's all in there, and so it's so relatable. It doesn't matter, like like Sam said, it doesn't matter if it's like in the '80s or '60s or now or whatever. It's all like everyone can relate to it. It's it's universal. So. Anyway, Natasha, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say, I think the show almost retroactively created an appetite for itself. So yeah. Ooh, nice, like, yeah. um, I think that this show paved the way for almost the way television is made today. There would be no Breaking Bad if not for shows like Freaks and Geeks. And I think that appetite was created. People love this kind of television that Freaks and Geeks was really kind of the first to do. Yeah. And so when that's exhausted currently, people are almost going back to rewatch what really sort of started it all. And it's just, uh, it. I mean, Everyone says it all the time. Freaks and Geeks was just made in a time that it didn't belong in, which is ironically very representative of what everyone was kind of going through in the show. It was all about being the misfit. Freaks and Geeks was the misfit show of its generation. 
And I think people kind of go back and, and uh, really revere it. And, and it really changed the way we make television today, I think. That's such a cool point to make uh, because it was a misfit in in reality, right? In, in terms of it's being able to be on TV. I know that sounds like kind of crazy, but you know, like it, it struggled in terms from the, you know, from network standpoint to like find its spot or find its place. And it was competing against like, I mean, silly things like reality TV shows and such like that. It was that, to be yeah. a millionaire. Oh, oh, no. Just oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it was yeah. competing against the World Series. So it was competing against itself on NBC. Yeah, because yeah. They, they screwed up the time slot so badly. Yeah. And I, I was actually doing a pilot right around then for NBC and um, Garth Anseer at that point was the head of NBC. And I knew him from back in the day at the early days of Fox. And he was always very open and candid with me. And I said, what's the story? He said, well, if we do an eight, this was the reboot uh, of the show. I will continue the order, which was only for three or four more. And it did an eight exactly. Right. And so he he was honorable in that respect. He um, you know, he went forward with it. But I mean, I hate to say it because I've been around for twelve hundred years, but the <laughs> list of shows that deserve better is unending and on my resume, too. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And the amazing thing about Freaks and Geeks is that it still has a life. Nobody watches the Tracy Ullman show. In fact, you can't even find it except on YouTube anymore. I mean, I, and I have a number of series like that that all deserved a better fate. Um, and I was really looking forward to us going forward because, as you may recall, I had been found out by Amy Aquino that, you know, I'd been having a dalliance on the side. And Judd yeah. said, shit, because we really want to do, uh, he wanted to explore the idea of a, you know, a divorced father and the relationship with his son, Mr. Sam Levine here. I don't know about David so much. Um, <laughs> and I thought, well, that would, have, that would have been great, you know. Um, oh, well. You know, but yeah. how many of those, you know, if you're doing this for five to 10 years, you're going to have that many oh wells, right? Yeah, sure. And like, like you said, this is just one, that I, maybe it was due to the cancellation that it, that it really stood out, stood out as that misfit show. You know what I mean? That everyone was like, this is so silly that it would never, that it never went anything. And now again, it's still on lists. TV guys, right. greatest shows of all time, you know, EW's right. greatest shows of all time. And I think to Natasha's point, you made a great point. It, uh, it set the people recognize it for what it did for TV. You know what I mean? And, and how it yep. really opened up that sitcom kind of thing. And that's where HBO was smarter than the networks because they said, yeah, we'll do yeah. five years of the wire, even though nobody was seeing it. And yet everybody now has seen it, Yeah, you know? Yeah. Um, Whereas before that, you know, and then of course, like you said, they went forward with who wants to be a millionaire, which of course, you know, did a crap out, uh, rest in peace, Regis, you know, but <laughs> yeah. I mean, that also had to do with the changing dynamics of how things got made Television. Yeah. because yeah. Deutsche Bank basically was, you know, bankrolling most of the major studios. And when the Irish real estate market took a crap, they got clobbered. And so they said, well, let's go to the money making shows like who wants to be a millionaire, which of course, you know, turned out to be a tremendous defeat finally you know and mm -hmm. remember they canceled they said there are no more sitcoms until the following year in which there were more sitcoms like everybody loves raymond you know right. um yeah but you know we're, we're being yeah. run by the bean counters and twas ever this you know it's very rare maybe 40 years ago when people like fred silverman not that i'm saying he's a genius or anything but at least there was a, a veneer or peter chernin of a kind of artistic bent you know, so it wasn't all about what the numbers were. He said, no, you know, I did a series for Peter at Fox called Likely Suspect, and he liked it. And so we were on the air. But had he not been there and then he moved over to movies, we lost him. We lost our rabbi, you know, and that was the end of the show, too. Anyway. This is this is amazing. This If you wrote, if <laughs> you wrote info. Yeah, Sam McMurray, if you, you should take the history of TV, the I history know. of television. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and then and then vo uh, voice record it. Oh man, I would listen to that uh, every day. Yeah, and thank <laughs> you for pointing out, Sam. Thing, I'm sorry, no, <laughs> but no, I was just going to say I didn't realize that uh, the tontine that we had entered with "Who Wants to Be a Millionaire." Now that you know Regis is gone, rest in peace. We win. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, so for whatever that's worth. Yeah, well, that's the idea is to outlive all these other motherfuckers. Did I say that? <laughs> uh, that's all right. Natasha <laughs> set the bar. I think Natasha dropped the, dropped the first half bomb. <laughs> So now we're well, now we're good. Now we're good. <laughs> I, this play that I've been working on is actually something well, that I, I've put together for. Thank you. Oh, did I? Yeah, I yeah did you said it first. Stuff. You said it first. You said it first. <laughs> but the interesting thing that Sam is talking about is sort of 
resounds to this play I've been working on, which is about the transition in like the late 40s from radio to live television, right? Which is fascinating. And that's why I'm actually working on this thing. And my parents in particular, my father did a lot of live television in the late 40s, early 50s. He, you know, come back and after the war and started acting. And people like Sidney Lumet used him a great deal. And I actually tell this story, I stole it for the play. My father goes in to meet, not to meet, not to meet Lamette, excuse me, to meet Henry Fonda, who was not only the star, but also the executive producer of 12 Angry Men, right? I'll be quick. And Lamette, <laughs> who was something of a munchkin, says, Hank, I want you to meet Dick McMurray. He did Philco. He did Playhouse 90 with me, yada, yada. I think it'd be great for juror number 12, whatever. <laughs> and Fonda's sitting in a chair and he stands up and walks over and stands next to my father. Now, my father was six foot three. And Fonda was maybe, maybe five, ten and a half. And he looks up at him and he goes and he sits back down. End of story. <laughs> you know, but it's in the play. This is but awesome. it is. It's the book. And the whole, and of course, yeah. television was all in New York in those days, you know. Yeah. So they screwed yeah. the pooch with the unions and so forth. But yeah. So <laughs> I'll, we'll talk later, Sammy. You'll tell me what to do next. By the yeah. way, I want to say I did an appearance with Sam on the Kevin Pollack show. Oh, that's nice. true. I, nice. Oh, I got to interview you at length. And that, to my knowledge, it's still up on YouTube in our archives. Uh, yes, if people want to watch uh, me and, and the great Sam McMurray have a, a lengthy, in-depth chat about uh, him. And you were great, Sam. I thought I got rather boring after a while. I'm oh, sorry, yeah. stop. Thank you very much. You're very no, sweet. Seriously. You're no, you're wonderful. Because, look, you have all these stories, and I, I personally love hearing them, and I know plenty yeah. of other people do as well. So check that out if you want to want to watch that. Yeah, so That's cool. Amazing so cuz cool. I'm still 17 and everybody's passing me now age-wise, you know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I saw Donald Logue the other day and we had done a series up in Seattle the same year that ER and Chicago Moke premiered. And he was, you know, he was a kid. And I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm going to get my pension early. I went, how old are you? He went, well, I'll be 55 next month. Like, Jesus Christ, you know, anyway. Yeah. So, Sam, Mc, yeah. Sam McMurray, I, I I hate to cut the great Sam McMurray. I'll own, move on to, a, to the next fan question. It's so, so such a cool story. But you actually brought up something uh, earlier uh, while you were chatting, uh, Sam, about plot points that you wanted to see, you wish you could have seen happen. And this actually, okay. while, you were, while you were saying this, a question came through. So I'd love to hear from the other three from prisoner 006, 006. That's their handle. Hopefully not their actual uh, name. Uh, <laughs> prisoner, prisoner 006 wants to know what other plot points for your characters uh, do you wish, or did you know that were going to be explored or you wish happened? Uh, let's start with the ladies, Natasha. Was there something that you were kind of hoping to see happen um, if the story continued? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everything. <no. laughs> so um, Paul Feig had always talked about we kind of saw later as the progression of Cindy's character that she uh, was was very conservative politically, um, and uh, she's kind of a super Republican. And so uh, Paul had always talked about how funny it would be to see she and Sam running for student body against ah. they're running for class president. So I thought that would have been uh, you know going from him being just adoring her to to them being sort of a, a little bit of a nemesis relationship there i thought yeah. that would be really fun and oh, yeah. it was really interesting to get in the head of a person who is a super republican and sort of explore that in the 80s i thought it would have been really funny just, oh my gosh you don't see that in in tv a lot you know what i mean like you don't not since family don't ties it was such a weird yeah. Right. But I mean, it was such a weird, like, car- like she just seemed so normal. And then one day I read the script and they were, and I was like, oh, that's really funny. So I thought it was <laughs> really funny to explore. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> And obviously we're referring to Sam the character, not Sam the Levine or Sam the McMurray, but Sam, <laughs> another <laughs> Sam in the mix there. Uh, Sarah, you uh, came in, became a, a super popular character. I know you were nominated for a bunch of awards for it and everything. Um, anything you would have liked to see uh, Millie kind of happen with Millie? Um, well, I would have liked to have seen her explore the freak side a little bit more. Ooh. That's for sure. I think that would have been really fun for season two. Like if, yeah, it would have gone a little bit further. Um, also, I feel like like um, one of the writers was saying like one of the things she wanted to explore was like one of the characters like getting her period, and like she was thinking that would have to be that would be Millie and like 
<laughs> exploring <laughs> the first time someone got their period. And so I don't know. <laughs> that would have been interesting, I guess. But yeah, definitely the freak side. I was uh, I was definitely a fan of that that episode. <laughs> awesome. Sam Levine, obviously we bring your brother in, David Crummel, that becomes uh-huh. a thing. There's yeah. a, yeah, yeah which, which was super f- a fun addition towards the, like the latter part, you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, about, no, yeah, that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I loved, I loved all the scenes I got to shoot with Crummy. He was great. I, you know, uh, I loved the dynamic <laughs> that he and I and Sam McMurray and Amy Aquino all yeah. had together. And in season two, we would have seen quite a lot more of that because as, as Sam McMurray alluded to before, um, season two arc for Neil was going to be his parents splitting up a really uh, uh, acrimonious divorce and, oh, and, yeah. uh, and how that was going to affect Neil and he was going to kind of rebel a little bit. Um, and that would have been, that, that would have been fun to, you know, to, to sink my, my young actor teeth into, mm-hmm. uh, but they were going to have Neil join swing choir <laughs> as a, as like an outlet. And what to this day, I'm that? still, that's the thing. To this day, I'm still not even sure what that is. Swing choir. So, is that, that still? Yeah, that's that's yeah. I don't know if that involves like singing and dancing. dancing. Yeah, Wait. like. Yeah, oh, right. it might be one of the. They do have the choirs that do choreographed yeah movements at the same time. So oh, I believe that's what it was. Hard. Yeah. It's not a choir that just yeah <laughs> sleeps with a different. It's not. It's not a choir oh, that oh, sleeps okay. with other <laughs> choirs. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I want to say it's like show choir. So yeah, I think show choir is swing okay. choir. I don't know. Maybe the same. Has anyone Googled swing choir? I just did. I've tried and- not to. <laughs> I'm afraid to. You it's- never know what two innocuous terms you're going to Google and it turns <laughs> into something horrible. See, the internet is scary, you guys. It's very scary. <laughs> it's a scary place. It's a scary there are place. things that you accidentally see that you don't want to see. I and swing choir sounds see. like it yeah, could right. be yeah. one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You all mentioned uh, the writers and again, obviously Paul Feig, show creator, but then uh, shout out to all the brilliant. I, I think that really is what you mentioned. The show is about adolescence and high school. There's a lot of those shows out there, but what set this apart was the writing, you know what I mean? And, and the relation and where it took the characters and how the characters interacted. And it just felt so, just so real and so, so awesome. So again, uh, my question leading into it is just uh, how much, and you met, you all mentioned kind of talking with the writers, how much did you bring to your characters early on as part of the process? Or were you really just coming in as, as, as actors and kind of getting the script and sort of running with it? Um, I always love to hear sort of what the give and take was in the, in the writing room. <laughs> well, they did table reads of like, uh, did they do table reads of every single, I think it was every single episode. I think we, most of them. Episode. It was wow. most of them. Yeah. As we got and towards the end it. and we were a little short on time, we didn't get to do yeah. it. Yeah, that's it. They would tape them. Our- was to do them for all of them yeah. yeah but I think like the I mean the writers would be there and everyone would be there watching and I think they would like kind of see how we as actors would say these lines but then also adjust it based on kind of us bringing in I guess our own take on the characters um so they they really use those table reads to kind of make the make it fit for us, kind of. Sir, you have the best story about that. You have the you have to tell the story. You, you I tell it all the time. Story. It's you like story about that. It's Come been on. told all the time. <laughs> would you know, would you like me to tell it quickly? It. You can, sure. All right, you seem embarrassed, so here it is. So I have often said uh, young, precious 14-year-old Sarah Hagen was by far and away in reality the closest to the character she was playing because <laughs> they wrote to her strengths. And so there is a line in the, in the episode, Kim Kelly is my friend yes. where M- Millie says of Kim Kelly uh, to, to uh, uh, Lindsay, you know, I don't trust that Kim Kelly, she fornicates. <laughs> and that's the line in the script, but adorable, precious 14 year old Sarah Hagen didn't know what that word really meant. So <laughs> when she said it at the table read, she said, I don't like that, Kim Kelly. She fornicates it. <laughs> it wasn't a complete I, sentence before you guys. It needed the it at the end. It needed the it. 
I am, we understand. <laughs> okay. Of so so that was a writing curve. error. You were just fixing it. I was just helping out. <laughs> and so this is on video. You we they they videotaped that uh -huh. table read, so you can watch this. The whole room dies laughing. The only person in the room who has no idea why everyone is laughing, Sarah Hagen. <laughs> so I, like, I mean, it was what? so it was so funny. It was so perfect. It was so real that it wound up, of course, being in the show. Right. Millie says to Lindsay, I don't trust Kim Kelly. She fornicates it. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so that, that to, to answer your question, that's what how the writers were using yeah. the actors to inform how they yeah. wrote the show. That's yeah. so awesome. And that's what made it so genuine. And that's why it felt so genuine the entire time. You know, you always felt like you were the characters, not actors playing characters, you know? Oh, man. I want to uh, give a shout out. We have a fan watching from India. Uh, say, uh, hey. Anime Chakras uh, says, a big fan from India. Stayed up until 2 a.m. in the night for this. Uh, awesome. 2 a.m. in the morning. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, in our eyes, you are all our favorite stars. Um, and yeah. then she goes on to say, there were so many stars on the show. It really launched the career of so many people. We don't need to list them. We all know who they are. Um, but, <laughs> but Anime Chakras, yourselves included, wants to know, you know, who was your favorite, you know, Who's someone that sticks out to you as being a favorite cast member um, from the show that's, that sticks sticks out to you? A favorite? I know, that I know. Is like We're putting a really a... horrible question. I, know, I mean, not, I know. not, sorry, not a horrible question. It's just, I can't pick a favorite. Like, I don't I'll take yeah, Okay, fine. I, I fell in you love can, with maybe? Linda Cardellini. I thought she was just, you know, yes. out of sight. And in fact, I was just watching um, Dead to Me. Dead to me. Oh, she's Which brilliant. is amazing because I knew Christine when she was 16 years old because we were all at Fox in the very early days, 86, 87, and so forth. And to watch the two of these consummate actresses just kick ass and give out haircuts is, you know, just makes me grin from ear to ear. Yeah. And Linda is so good. She yeah. is so good that she doesn't get enough uh, appropriate reaction. You know what I mean? She does not get the appreciation she deserves because she's always so solid. But this thing, she's, yeah. you know, quite amazing. And, and well, she's just nominated for an Emmy. Right, and role, I, they yeah. are gonna come back for a third season post-pandemic, yeah. of, of cool. course, you know. But uh, I, I just thought she was wonderful right from the get, you know, and she was, Sam, you'll know, right? She was considerably older than what she was playing, right? She, oh, was, yeah. she, she was like was 17, the but she's really 25 or something. Like 25. Yeah, she was 25 playing, <laughs> playing 17. She's, but she's she, nine she years older than yet. me. Yeah. Oh, she's okay. nine years older than me, and I had like almost all my scenes with her, and she was she was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't seen her since we had that reunion a few years ago with Van Eyes, which was interesting. <laughs> you know, all these all these millionaires, you know. Like, oh, really? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's like doing The Simpsons now, you know. Anyway, that's another. <laughs> the freaks and geeks right. have separated now. Um, yeah. yes. Yeah, well, maybe not even okay. favorite. I know favorite is tough. Oh, well, Sam's going to pick one. Maybe favorite yeah, no, mem I, memories. I, I, you know. I want to say, for me, so I have always, always, always been a, a huge fan of movies and television. So one of the hardest things for me as an actor is when I'm on set working with someone whose career and work I really admire, I have to walk this delicate line of playing it cool to not <laughs> just like overwhelm them with, you know, Chris Farley show level like, so... <laughs> You were on The Simpsons. That that must have been cool. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, so for me, getting to work with the great Sam McMurray, who I oh. grew up loving. I mean, you talk, we've talked about mm -hmm. this. I loved the Tracy Ullman show. I yeah. loved you in Raising Arizona. I loved you in yes. everything I've ever seen you in. So having Sam play my dad was such a coup for me. And then oh. having the great Tom Wilson play Coach Fredericks. Oh, oh yes, yes. I mean, so you know, we got we got Biff. I mean, he's no yeah. he's <laughs> such an yes. enormous great body of work. Yes. And you know, I, you know I, so I, I, nope. no, go ahead. No, 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 All right. I, but <laughs> I'm gonna stop. You talk. Yeah, Zoom I'm calls. Done. Zoom calls. <laughs> no, I'm just saying like Biff. So uh, Tom Wilson got to play a coach. I was on a very short-lived television show called Do Over, and they didn't tell me who was going to be playing the coach. And I arrived at set one day, and it was like, oh my god, it's Tom Wilson, and he's the coach in this show too. It was the coolest thing ever. And I never, for I grew up watching um, Back to the Future like on a loop from a VHS tape, and like he's the one that I just couldn't like I still can't get over it but yeah. I was in a scene with Biff it's like the coolest thing ever 
<laughs> yeah, it was. I, it was I think very finally cool because... three downs to 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 Judd's credit. Quite honestly, I didn't yeah. audition. I had been doing a series, I think, and it was free. And Judd just called or had somebody call or maybe Allison called and said they want you to do this. I was like, sure. I mean, not knowing anything, but I, I think that that some of his some of his choices are uncanny. Quite mm-hmm. honestly, you know, full marks for that. It often gets, yeah, I mean, it often gets written up, uh, Freaks and Geeks and Undeclared, and then obviously all of his work as one of the best cast casted shows. You know what I mean? Like the best that's, bringing together, you know? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. that's credit to Allison Jones, who was the yes. casting director on Freaks and Geeks, and yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure Undeclared, and just about everything else he's done since. And, yeah. um, you know, Freaks and Geeks was nominated for three Emmys over its 18 yeah. episodes, yeah. two for writing, one for casting, and... Uh, they, Allison did, in fact, win the Emmy for best casting yeah. on Freaks and Geeks. I mean, yes, yes, feather in our caps, but much more to her credit. She yeah. has an eye that is second to none in the casting mm-hmm. world. Yeah, so awesome, so awesome. Natasha, Sarah, I don't want to put you on the spot. I know if not favorite, but maybe just favorite memories. There's a cast member that you had like the fondest memory with. Um, it could be someone in the room or someone. Not. I have to say, first of all, Mr. McMurray, we never got to meet on set. So for no. me... Like I was so excited all week for this. So yeah. this is so cool for me. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like I'm not cool around people. I don't know how to be like <laughs> cool around people. But for me, I'm like so stoked to be here right now. But no, I just I loved working with Martin Starr. I love working with John Daly. He was such a freaking goofball behind the camera, which oh, was yeah. really fun. And then Sam and I were great friends outside of work. We and it's mostly because he had a car and I didn't. <laughs> That's entirely <laughs> true. She did not care for me, just the wheels. <laughs> no, but Sam and I were great friends. We used to go bowling and sushi and all kinds of fun mm. stuff. So those are those are super fun memories. Awesome. Yeah. Sarah? I mean, I don't know. I guess I, I have to pick Linda just because I worked with her the most. And yeah. she was just, you know, there was this time um, on set when I couldn't for the life of me remember my lines and that's like the worst thing as an actor to like have that experience I don't know if any of you guys have had it before but I (laughs) I had it um and it was like I I I uh I had a meltdown basically I started to, to cry I was really upset with myself I was angry with myself and um Linda you know, she sat with me, she made me feel better. She was like, you know what, we'll get through this together. Like, I'm, we're here for you. The, the script supervisor was right there, like next to the camera. Like she was just like, we're going to help you through this. It's going to be okay. So I don't know. Linda's, Linda's awesome. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, shout out to fans, Brooke Malone and Edward is cool. 93. They both asked similar questions about favorite episodes, favorite memories, favorite moments. So uh, thank you for submitting that question. And y'all we we've been, we barely scratched the surface here. We had such amazing stories and we're already like way, way over time. Um, this has been so lovely. I want to read uh, something from two other fans just because it came through. Uh, and both are super sweet. It just shows you the fan love. Um, I mentioned the countries that we're watching before. We also have uh, Malta, Glasgow, Scotland uh, in the house, Um, people watching from Canada as well. And this comes uh, from two parents uh, out there, current parents. Uh, Valentine X Valentine says, uh, this show was on when I was a kid and related to kids. And now as a parent, I see it from the parents' perspective as well. And having lived through the 80s, it's so realistic. It will never get old. Just a beautiful show. That's uh, from Wendy. And then Prisoner 006 comes back and says, as a dad, I want to say thank you to the cast for the special show that I share now with my two daughters. Many laughs shared between us and the show opened up good discussions about school life. School life. The show served as my Trojan horse into my daughter's school lives. Thank you so much. Those are both live comments coming through. So oh, cool. awesome. Yeah. You know, they show some of these episodes in schools, like as like to teach them about things. Like the pot episode, I think they showed at school. Um, <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. They, I, I've That's heard people tell me it's like, air. what? NBC didn't want to air that because there was a, it was. Well, about- now they show it at school. <laughs> Look at <laughs> each kid. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. So I just, 
Yeah, so I just wanted to say, again, on behalf of all the fans watching, I'm sort of their uh, conduit here <laughs> uh, to you all. We just want to say thank you for taking some time out of your day. Just reflect back on the series. Um, it's so cool that uh, folks are going back and watching it again. I remember watching it young and then going back and watching it again just for this panel. But uh, we thank you for taking some time out of your day. I'd love to go around around the room and just any final words of uh, wisdom or uh, op <laughs> optimism or just shout out to the fans. Also, let us know anything you know you got coming up that we can see you in. Uh, shout out uh, to you specifically, Sam. One more uh, fan shout out from Floppy Jalopy uh, RL. Just says we we love seeing you at convent. We love our favorite memory of seeing you at convention, Sam. Hey, you Levine. So they're excited to have you back on the convention circuit. Uh, but let's go around the room and just uh, hear some final thoughts from everybody. Natasha, if you want to kick things off. Oh, just thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for keeping Freaks and Geeks alive. It's such a cool thing. Um, stay happy, stay healthy, stay safe, stay sane, I guess. We oh, can all yeah. do it. Thank you. Bye, guys. Awesome. Thank you. Sarah? Yeah, same. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, it was nice to be here and to talk a little bit about one of my favorite shows ever being on so um thank you guys to all the fans for like just supporting us all these years and continuing to watch and it's awesome i really love you and nice to talk to you thanks mike thanks sam thanks, thanks sam all right bye guys <laughs> bye awesome thank you sam levine why don't you take it uh, sure. Um, uh, you know, of course, I want to thank everyone, especially thanks to Wizard World, by the way, and you, Mike, for helping make these great panels happen. Oh, um, so. And uh, yeah, I love hearing that that you're, you know, you're getting so much love from so many fans overseas. Yes. And, you know, I mean, I, I started by saying one of the things that makes the show so memorable is that the themes are universal um, in terms of time. But I've been fortunate enough to travel around the world and meet fans from all over the world. And so I've also found that the themes are not only universal to American kids, but to kids growing up pretty much anywhere in the world. And yeah. uh, that's, that's a pretty uh, impressive claim. So hats off to Judd, Apatow, Paul Feig, our incredible writer's room, uh, all of our amazing directors, and, and most importantly, the fans worldwide for keeping this thing something that we're all somehow still talking about 21 years later. Um, so thank you to everyone. It's It's been a, a real great joy uh, getting to to know that we have so many wonderful fans the world over. So thank awesome. you to all of them. And thanks to you, Mike. And ah, thanks, buddy. Sam, I'll, I'll see you. I'll see you we'll backstage. Talk. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, stick around, everybody. Stick around. We'll say, we'll say bye in a sec. All right. Thanks, Sam. Sam Levine. Uh, and Sam McMurray, why don't you uh, take us home? Oh, gee, okay. It's quite a responsibility. <laughs> but I will say it, it's fascinating the, the, I don't know, the contradiction of sorts between this time of self-isolating and so forth and, and how necessary the, the, the need is to connect with one another, even if it's Zoom or maybe particularly if so. And the fact that, you know, to, to quote Faulkner, the past isn't the past. In fact, it isn't even the past. I think I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. <laughs> paraphrase but that is true and it, it does mean a lot and, and to you know a, a, an actor and i actually totaled up between my parents my stepmother and my daughter i've been in show business for about 140 years or no 240 years and wow. it, and it, it's remarkable and it, it quite honestly i'm i'm so grateful because I, i've made i'm being made to feel germane still relevant and so on and that's the nice thing about actors you never really you know age out you just sort of move into the next category. And and that show was particularly fun for me in, in all respects, not the least of which was the writers and the cast. So thank you. And uh, I hope to see everybody later, one form or another. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much. The great Sam McMurray, everybody. Uh, we have a fan in the comments saying, uh, Sheriff Woody 777, I'm going to buy the DVD right now. <laughs> Remember DVDs? Uh, let's give yeah. one more big round of emojis uh, to the amazing cast uh, from Freaks and Geeks. Let's hear it one more time in the comments. Show me those thumbs up. Show me those uh, hearts for Natasha Melnick, Sam McMurray, Sam Levine, and Sarah Hagen, everybody. Show them your love uh, through digital form. Uh, what a pleasure. And again, yeah, you can go back and watch it on, on various streaming platforms. It's definitely worth a rewatch or a 
uh, watching it for the first time, especially. And oh man, shout out to all the parents out there uh, that put in that they're sharing it with their kids now. That's so cool and so awesome. And just really adds to the legacy uh, of this show that will continue. Um, so again, uh, thanks to all the fans that submitted questions. Fans, if you have additional questions, guess what? Uh, this was free. You might be watching it live. You might be watching it later in the week, but you can purchase one-on-one -on -one video chats with each one of these uh, cast members or all the cast members. So head to Wizard World Virtual right now. You have until Saturday night, uh, Saturday evening to purchase those, and then those will take place on Sunday. Uh, so definitely take advantage of that <coughs> once-in-a-lifetime experience to hang out with your favorite actor, actors, uh, and ask them your uh, specific questions. Those are on sale at wizardworldvirtual.com. Autographs, video recorded messages, those will be uh, available throughout the week. So um, definitely head there and check those out. We've got some amazing panels coming up tomorrow. We are talking from many of the cast members from the Harry Potter film franchise, uh, in addition to cast members from Arrow. On Saturday, we are talking to Mickey Dolenz, the legend, everybody. The monkeys, uh, Mickey Dolenz. So uh, definitely come back for that. And stay tuned to social media at Wizard World. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to check out any of those upcoming experiences coming up. My name is Mike G. I've been your moderator. I love hanging out with you all. Uh, over 75 of these we've done, uh, and they're just always so cool and always so interesting. Um, they just keep getting better. So uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us. You can follow me at Mike G does things if you'd like. Uh, it's the best way to kind of slide in those pre-panel questions. You can send them uh, directly to me through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. On behalf of Wizard World Virtual Experiences, this has been the Freaks and Geeks reunion panel. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time.